I live in Globe Town on Roman Road, a road once known as Drift Street. The flat's in a canal side redevelopment, built in the last speculative bubble. Every morning I watch Daddy Coat bringing more twigs to build a nest for Mummy Coat, who's always sat in the middle. London's an eternal building site. It's constantly being torn down and built up again. Like Paris is constantly getting the final touches, or Venice is constantly being preserved and propped up. Me flat's on the edge of an eco park, A man-made countryside with a dead straight canal running through it. A fragment of a watery garden city utopia. The kind we used to read about as children in books about cities of the future. The future's always incomplete, as a child's oversimplicity about it. Drift Street, Globe Town. Gurgles in a rich river of history, concreted over by the obsessive compulsive disorder of post war modernism. A clean, forgetful future that never was. London's a roll call of yesterday's utopias, overlapping in space and time. Yesterday's hopes and dreams, poking through history into the present. There's always been a Jerusalem to build, a new Athens, a new Rome. The edge and extent of the old East End is marked by a graceful, stately terrace set in elegant stone. The slight hiss of the six-lane traffic, an almost inaudible clue that a different world lies beyond the neoclassical stage set. And like the wardrobe that leads to Narnia, a gap in the terrace leads into a completely different movie, a completely different order of city, a 20th century vision, an impassable torrent of traffic rushing down a concrete gorge. And over to the wrong side of the magic circle. A cement silo, an encampment for gypsy mobile homes that freight trains rumble over. Wildflowers poke through the derelict brickwork. Strange rare flowers, the secret life of the city. I remember the first time I went to Hackney Wick. A clapped out industrial wasteland tumouring along the banks of the River Lee. My friend the Venetian had moved into a huge warehouse there. He told me to ring him when I arrived, but once I got there, his phone was off. Bollocks, I thought. I'm trapped in an industrial estate with no directions. No cafes, no shops, nowhere for people to interact. But there were signs. A photo of Baudelaire stared out from a grubby factory window. An old pub called the Lord Napier, covered in art college stencil graffiti, I presumed was a squat. And then, suddenly, water. The silty, dirty banks of the River Lee splintered into myriad streams on the way to meet the Thames at Bow Creek. How funny the Venetian lives here, I thought, in this anti-Venice.
The Venetian finally rang. I met him at the Lord Napier, which to my delight was actually a functioning semi-legitimate pub. Serving either cans of Guinness from a bin full of ice, or balloons of laughing gas at one pound a pop. And afterwards, back at the Venetian's factory floor, I gazed across this fragile city of art and its blighted industrial creeks. It all made sense to me now. Hackney Wick was a secret bohemia of sorts. It reminds me of Shoreditch years ago, or more truthfully, how I imagined Shoreditch was before people like me started turning up. But then, as soon as this thought occurred, I saw all the warning signs, the beginning of the end, a forest of cranes, the hugeness of the Olympics. This anti-Venice that was sinking below the sandblasted Olympic amnesia to come. The 21st century scrubbing the East End so clean that the pattern's nearly coming off. But once that Olympic future's old, London's life will still sprout up from the roots, spring up through the cracks, overrunning any designs imposed on it. London's the chaos, the colour and the smell of the market. A kaleidoscope bloom of flower stalls, piles of barbecues in boxes, cheap and nasty Donald Duck bedsheets, from the stock exchange to the Roman road, London's one big market and always was. Every day on my corner shop run, I meet the stare of Canary Wharf. A gaze that governs the global market I find myself two miles from the epicentre of. I think about it as I buy me pint of milk and Cadbury's twirl from the Bengali corner shop lady. A nice, friendly lady, whose name I don't know, whose life I'll never know. This pleasant stranger, who's been drawn here across vast improbable distances by the magnetic current of the blinking pyramid. Canary Wharf rises on its water like some mirage of the future some sci-fi fortress city. The squiggle in the river, the navel of the world. I'll never know the vast purpose of this place, any more than a tea leaf knows the history of the East India Company as the quote went round my head. Canary Wharf creates its own weather, just as it creates its own financial storms and cycles. The pyramid with its esoteric wink, the echo of a very old attempt to impose perfection, to impose heaven on earth. Winking from the deep past, winking from the far future, glimpses of an emerging civilization that will eclipse all previous Londons. <laughs> 